We're going to be talking about lipids. What are lipids? It's cholesterol tests. We're going to be looking at how to interpret cholesterol tests. Are there things in your cholesterol test that indicate danger that uh, you are not aware of? Can it show uh, diabetes? Absolutely it can, and we'll talk about how you how it does that in a few minutes. But first of all, let's go back and figure out what's on the cholesterol test. We're looking at um, good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, right? HDL is the good cholesterol, LDL is the bad cholesterol. Then we're looking at triglycerides, um, HDL, and then even ratios of um, cholesterol over HDL. Well, high, high uh, ratios like 5 and over indicate risk. Well, <clears throat> there's actually an, an even more interesting and, and maybe important risk that you see on this that very pe uh, people don't tend to understand, they don't tend to look for, and that is triglyceride over HDL ratio. Once it gets 2, 3, and 4, it starts to show very significant increased risk for what? Diabetes or insulin resistance. Now, how does triglyceride over HDL uh, indicate risk for, for diabetes? We'll talk about that too. Now, <clears throat> but let's stop. Let's go back. What, what are these things? What's the difference between HDL, LDL, triglycerides, all of these different things, because they're related. First of all, before we get there, we need to understand what a lipoprotein is. Um, <clears throat> here's a glass of water. Here is a uh, olive oil. And let's look at the glass of water is completely water. The blood is a good model for blood. Blood is over 95% water. And oil when you think about it, this is like um, we eat a salad with olive oil or we eat a hamburger with fats and oils. Look what happens. You get these bubbles that form of the oil. The oil and water don't mix. And as these oil bubbles continue to bump into each other, they just form a bigger and bigger oil bubble. Here we've got one stuck down on the bottom. I haven't seen that before. But <clears throat> this is one big area where, again, the oil and water haven't mixed. What do you do then when you eat uh, food that has oil in it? Well, first of all, let's just mention the point that this does happen in medicine. It's a very serious issue. It's called a fat embolism. Uh, it happens with major trauma when you have like a car wreck and people have multiple broken bones. The fat in the, uh, the bones, the bone marrow, is released into the bloodstream sometimes. That fat is what we call a, a fat embolus or a fat um, clot, not a clot. You know, with a heart attack and stroke, we routinely worry about um, clot embolus, but an embolus is a particle, a large particle going through the bloodstream which can cut off blood supply. Fat embolus does it as well and can be far more serious than a routine heart attack or a stroke. So how does our body prevent that from happening? How does our body keep that oil, those oils from forming bigger and bigger and bigger emboli? How does it keep these fat particles so microscopic? Same way it does almost anything else on a biochemical basis. It makes a protein and then the protein does something. Guess what? Lipoprotein is a fat protein. It's the proteins that we use to, in our bodies to transport fat and to keep fat from forming those large emboli or bubbles that would be lethal. So, <clears throat> to get back to the illustration, you remember the, uh, the statement that HDL is good and LDL is bad? Well, HDL and LDL in, in, are, can be seen as empty dump trucks or full dump trucks, where HDL is, a, is an empty dump truck and is therefore good for us, is taking cholesterol away, or LDL, 
Uh, it's taking cholesterol or fats away from that artery. LDL, on the other hand, is an overloaded uh, dump truck. And in this illustration, you see they're using um, wheelbarrows. LDL deposits cholesterol. Now, <clears throat> maybe we should go back and ask the question, what's the difference between HDL and LDL? Very, very little. They both have the protein component, they both have the cholesterol component, and they both have triglyceride components. In fact, the difference between an HDL, or good, quote, good cholesterol, and LDL, or bad cholesterol, is simply the portion that you have protein in it. With HDL cholesterol, it, the particles are 50% protein. That gets back to the understanding of how uh, the analogy of empty dump trucks and full dump trucks. If you see the protein as the dump truck and the cholesterol or lipids, triglycerides, as the stuff being carried by the dump truck or the wheelbarrow, then it becomes clear why an HDL, the good cholesterol, is, a, is an empty dump truck and able to pull cholesterol and lipids away. The LDL is more of a full dump truck and it's not able uh, to carry anymore. It's, drip, it's dropping uh, cholesterol and, and um, triglycerides in the arteries. <clears throat> so uh, here's another illustration of this same thing. HDL, again, higher amounts of protein, and LDL with uh, less protein and more uh, what we call phospholipids on the outside, and triglycerides and cholesterol, esterized cholesterol on the inside. <clears throat> we'll talk about those phospholipids later. In fact, why don't we just talk about them right now. Here's a phospholipid. The, phosphor, the phosphate section of this lipid is waterphilic. Or it, it's got uh, ions on it, so therefore it works well with water, ionized. The, um, the lipid part of the phospholipids points inward where there's, this is the fat or oil section. So you have the water section, which is um, lipophobic or hydrophilic, and then the meaning, it loves the water. So here's the, uh, the phosph phosphate section that loves the water. This same molecule aligns to where the uh, hydrophobic or lipophilic, in other words, hates water, loves fats and oils, that part sticks into the particle. Here's the protein, and again, the difference between uh, a large particle, or LDL, is uh, LDL is 25% or less protein, whereas an HDL is 50% or more in protein. And guess what? You know, they call LDL the lousy uh, cholesterol. L in the LDL, the first L stands for low density. H stands for high density. So the high density has more protein. Protein doesn't float. The lipids do. So the protein is a higher density material, and that's how it gets the name. HDL, high density, higher amount of protein. So again, just some information to help us understand these particles. <clears throat> Actually, when you go deeper with these particles, you begin to understand a few other things as well. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, HDL and LDL that we talked about before. But then you get larger and larger components of these uh, fat-carrying particles or oil carrying particles. You have what we call VLDLs, very low density lipoproteins. As you see, one of the major differences in these, and these tend to have the same proteins in them, uh, they tend to have phospholipids in them, but one of the differences is the, these larger pro, uh, particles like VLDL just have a lot more triglycerides in them. As it turns out, 
The triglyceride over HDL ratio is um, physiologically, or it, the body links it to uh, taking lipids out of uh, these particles, these increased triglyceride particles, taking triglycerides out and putting them into HDL. So what you get is increased lipids or, or fats, and that's because of insulin and glucose. We'll talk about that in the next video. Increased uh, triglycerides, decreased HDL, because you've taken these triglycerides from the bloodstream, which were increased by the insulin, and then you started putting them in HDL. You create that ratio, and you get an increase of um, triglycerides over HDL. Let's go back and remember what all this is about. This is about depositing LDL, low-density lipoproteins, in the wall of the artery. This is a clean section, and this is progressing to more and more deposition of plaque and uh, even plaque rupture. So what we want to do is keep the artery up on this end nice and clean. And as we start getting increased lipids, we start uh, triglycerides with diabetes, we start getting uh, decreased HDL, the LDL gets overloaded, I mean the HDL gets over, overloaded and that ends up resulting in an increased LDL, which creates more plaque deposition. We'll talk about this again a little bit later in a, another video, but this is just to help us get started on uh, interpreting cholesterol tests and the two ratios total cholesterol over HDL and triglyceride over HDL.